Welcome back to the Atlanta Major, and we have one match left. FaZe and Dark Zero going head to head. Brazil versus NA, a regional rivalry we deeply love. I cannot wait to get this one started. I'm Jackie Jing, and I'm with Fresh and Laxine. Oh my goodness. I mean, you of all people know, NA versus Brazil. I'm always excited for these ones. You know, in the early ages of Siege, NA Brazil, there was a very obvious decider. It was always NA. Oh, but no. as of these past years, it seems <laughs> like Brazil is just dominating NA for the most What's part. What's your record against Brazil? Did you do well? So early on, early on, I was like Brazil's worst nightmare. <laughs> then yes, I started losing to him. Yeah. So I think once I think once I made that transition to Cloud9 or reciprocity that's when or maybe after reciprocity is when i started losing every single game to brazilian teams okay uh, brazil's that, worst nightmare before needs that, to be on a shirt it's, by the it's way. true i think i only lost to one team ever throughout my career up until most recently but every other game i was winning okay okay i sent a lot of teams home off. okay okay we're in the presence of greatness yeah. i wasn't sure if you're aware okay but for you the know, brazilian fans i love great? you guys by the way yes yeah. we love brazil we love brazil Just we, love Brazil's NA. we love we know, we know why you're all that. amazing <laughs> sending all the love um okay fresh though yep. how are we feeling okay last Oh, match of the day, and it's been wild. I, I said this in play-ins, that this was potentially, the uh, in play-ins, was potentially one of the best days of Siege we've had in a couple of years. Yeah. Today tops that. Yeah. Because of the sheer amount of upsets. The, we've had great Siege, but we've had a lot of upsets and a lot of Jeopardy today, and I love it. And one more game, we still could have some more. Yeah. All right, well, we got to talk about FaZe versus Dark Zero here. Uh, you know what, Lexane? I want to pick your brain about this. Okay. You've played Dark Zero more times than you can probably count. I can't even count that high, but I know it's a lot. <laughs> yes, truly. But, okay, the fifth seat. I wonder if this is just kind of the missing piece for them. Will Rice, the rookie, fill that spot well? What do you think? So we've talked about this a little bit on the NAL. Dad's like, DZ uh -huh. are no slouch. They know who they want. They know who they need to fill into their spots, their roles, whatever that is. So I have no doubt in my mind that Rice, again, is a reason for them to be filling the positions that he is. Mm -hmm. So going back to touching up on that more, you got Troy, you got Pamba, you got Gavini, you got NJR. It's more on Rice than anything to really slot into his role and they will allow him to flourish, but he does have to get that general consensus of how this team dynamic functions and then especially in a LAN environment. Like, you can have players that perform, you know, on main, well, during the regular league, but LAN is one of the biggest things that you need True. all players performing on. And I think Rice can do that. Okay, uh, talking about team dynamics, let's switch over to FaZe. Souls and Cyber, I mean, what a duo. Right, Fresh? Yeah, this is like kind of the legacy, you know, players from FaZe. Mm -hmm. um, they've, I, I would say FaZe have undergone kind of a, a rebuild, you yeah. could say. You know, this isn't the phase of two, three years ago that, you know, was feared. This is the cameraman missing Astro. Yeah. This is a brand new phase that are still equally as feared. And I think that's testament to, you know, the remaining players and the new players that they mm -hmm. brought in. Um, I think FaZe have got a lot of good things going for them. I think particularly their ability to read the game inside of yeah. the round quickly adapt to it and then just pivot on you know on a spin five okay. seconds pivot into a round into a completely different win condition almost if they need to and i think that's one of their you know their biggest attributes the fact that they're still operating at this highest level i know people was very surprised with phase during the brazil stage and the fact that they went out and won, won brazil which was very important for them that final against w7m was very important for them so it's interesting that you talk about them like that because I've always viewed FaZe, whatever iteration it was, that they've always been the team in Brazil that has had like a very concise play style of how they want to do things yep. where a lot of other Brazilian teams have maybe been a little more chaotic or straight in your face. I always felt FaZe had that team chemistry where they were more methodical but still had that gunplay to back it up. Yeah, I think they just have a very, very good read on their opponents at all times. Definitely. I do want to look back at Dark Zero. Um, Pam tweeted out that it was one of the craziest series series um, when they barely beat Fury. Fresh, you had some harsh words and no, I was no. chatting with you about that earlier. He's trying to convince himself a little and the, you know, the fans a little bit more because okay. I think I think what he really wanted to tweet was thank goodness for that we True. escaped. Okay. Because again, it was another one of these teams where one round goes differently yeah. against Fury and one a couple of rounds should have gone differently against Fury and Dark Zero aren't, aren't even sat behind us. They came very, very close to being eliminated. Hopefully that's the kick up the backside they need. Because this team is a team that, you know, 12, 15 months ago won a major in yep. terms of when we was back in Charlotte. This is a team that has some of NA's smartest and best Correct. players, especially in terms of, you know, Pamba, NJR, Gaveni. I know we talked about Rice as the rookie. Yep. They've got some of the smartest players in North American Siege. 
if it clicks, this is a very dangerous team. And hopefully that was the scare they needed. All right. I believe that we are ready to move into the map selection process. We are working to bring that information up on the Ooh. screen. There we go that way. <laughs> so I'll take this one for the start. So watching them play throughout the NAL, yeah. they did go neck and neck with Sonic. Sonic's ended up, well, no, I don't think it was neck and neck, but it was a close game overall. Okay. Um, sorry, I just, my mind's all over the place. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's, it's an it exciting is. event. It's There's a, a lot of setup, it. like crazy yeah. things going on. But to bring it, to bring FaZe to this, I don't feel that they're stronger than FaZe in my opinion, because Sonic's one is a team that played that map extremely well versus yeah. them. And I just don't feel that they've really since then shown too much on it. Yeah. Whereas FaZe, I think the dynamic and how they play heavily, like a map, how Nighthaven is played, I can see that more falling in FaZe's hands. I yeah, guess. and the numbers okay. kind of back this up, I would say. Cause so for Dark Zero, this is like their fifth map preference. It's very middle of the road in terms yes. of Nighthaven. They've played it against North American teams and we said North American Siege on Nighthaven. Yeah. It seems to be good at the minute. However, for FaZe, it is their number one map preference, but the results don't back up the fact that they're great on it because they did lose it to Lost One, and they did end up winning against Netshoes Miners, but, you know, everyone was winning against Netshoes Miners in BR. And it's a best of one. Anything realistically can happen, but like you were saying, like I was saying, I think it does more heavily favor in FaZe's favor more than anything. Okay, quick predictions, go. I'm going to go with Dark Zero. I'm okay. going to go with FaZe. Just because I knew Are he was going for FaZe. Are you just splitting every time? He's, he's no, abandoned no, in his no, region, no. so I've got to back it. Okay. Well, it's got to work. All right. Well, we will see how it plays out. I'm going to hand it over to Dev and Mandy. I miss you all. The last time I saw you all, you were on the analyst desk with me, but cast away, my friends. Thanks, Jackie. No, we finally escaped. We just we didn't like you very much, so now we get to cast instead. <laughs> I can't say that. She's way too nice. Yeah, I was going to say. That's, like, that's way too hard. That's, that's the second time today that you've been mean to Jackie. I'm sorry. I might actually tear up. You you could see I was tearing up after that bleed game. I've got really irritated eyes. I swear, it's just allergies. But this game will certainly give you something to cry about. If you're a fan of FaZe and they lose, or if you're a fan of DZ and they fumble the ball here, this is not exactly a David and Goliath matchup, but this is, in a way, two major champions of the past going head to head. It's been two years since phase one in the Sweden, in Javle in 2021, and uh, about a year and a half since Dark Zero raised the hammer uh, here in America, in Charlotte. Very different roster though for phase plan. For Dark Zero, pretty similar. I feel over the past year, really, um, they've only rotated in that, that fifth player. And it has been a bit of a, well, it's been a bit, hard year really to try and find the right fit and I think Laxon put it perfectly it really is now on the onus of Rice to find his place in the team especially in a LAN environment and do his job. On the side of FaZe Clan though they have completely changed their identity in the past year of play. It doesn't feel like the FaZe are of old but still a very strong roster and one to be feared. Mm. Indeed, yeah. FaZe, they still bear the name. They still bear the reputation of an organization and a, a, a team like FaZe. I mean, these guys have been in Rainbow Six for a very long time, and Cyber and Souls pretty much the whole way through it. As we get into the map, it is, like we said, Nighthaven Labs, Dark Zero's favorite, or one of their favorites. Dark Zero tend to love going to these new maps and experimenting. They are very creative minds with Mint, of course, coaching them as well. Let's see if FaZe have got something to keep pace with DZ. Interesting, it's Laxing, I think, pointed out that he actually thinks that FaZe is going to be favored on this map just by the, the clash of the play styles. Mm. I'm actually kind of on board with that idea as well, to be honest. I feel like with the current iteration of FaZe, they have so many players that know how to play that like supportive role that on a map like Nighthaven, they're so good at just picking apart the map and knowing what's going on and what they have to do to break it down in like this methodical way. Whereas I think that Dark Sea very much got a clashing play style to that. We are going through the ban phase now and uh, Doki B being banned out by Dark Zero uh, does mean that some of that the roam clear potential is made a little bit more tricky. Monty being banned out as well on the side of FaZe Clan. Pretty popular band these days, rather fashionable. Um, does mean that some of that like early game pressure, even through the mid game, some of that free intel that you get on the Monty is going to be taken out. Uh, I think it's uh, the Dokubi ban, the one that stands out for me 
We saw a lot of Dokubi earlier today, a lot of Dokubi Lion combos as yeah, well. Yeah. Really, really effective at shutting down roamers. There's a lot of roam potential on Nighthaven. I love this map. There's so many different ways you can play it. Every bomb site pans out differently. And both of these teams have played quite a bit of Nighthaven, considering it's only been in the pool for just a few months. FaZe Clan. They managed to take down NIP 7-2, oh, sorry, it was Miners GG 7-2 on Nighthaven, but they did lose to Lost 1 5-7 later in the Brazilian League of Stage 2. DZ, as the guys on the desk said, have had some wins and losses. One win at the Major itself, a 7-2 over Knights, but this is a far more powerful opponent that they find themselves up against today. Dark Zero starting on the defending side. I'm going to send us down into the basement for the first bomb side of choice. Interesting uh, adaptation to the strategy. They have brought along uh, Gavani on the mirror, and he's actually opened up the assembly wall halfway rather than keeping both the walls closed off. Oh, actually, he's going to oh, okay. reinforce off the rotation that he made. So maybe he was just trying to shoot out either a drone out there or something going on. Instead, he's going to keep those mirrors internal. Meanwhile, the rest of Dark Zero do look for that extended roam through the map, aided, of course, by the Solace on the captain and IGL of Canadian. Any operator that gives information, that's Canadian's bread and butter. Back in the day, it was all about the pulse. I think Solace was made basically for Canadian. It's his dream operator, more or less. And as we see a lot of this drone work from FaZe, this is really what DZ should be trying to mitigate. Now, parcel barricades, protecting a lot of this bottom garage and slowing down FaZe will force them to think of how to deal with it. Interesting clear of the map so far. Handy getting some quick work done on the pantry wall. And that does mean that the fall off route for a lot of these defenders is made unsafe if a player decides to drop in. Not only that, but the entry being aided as well by one of the boogie drones into cargo does mean uh, that right on the other side feels a little bit of that pressure. But so far, FaZe Clan, even though they have slowly started to pick up the building itself, there aren't really actual boots in the building just yet. No, they are being very slow about it. I think Cyber's now made his way into Kitchen as the first adrenal surge from Finca rattles on out. Cyber very slow. This has been quite a slow and methodical push from FaZe Clan, but they are, as a result, making sure to clear all of the setup, all of the utility. A lot of goo mines have been around. NJR now to open up a crossfire to support his teammate. Pambas out is in a corner over in that other room, but KDS is actually the one to find the opening kill. So Canadian's gone down at the bottom of these exo stairs. And KDS has a very advanced position. Really well set up cutoff for KDS. Remember, very early on in the round, they opened up that pantry wall, oh. anticipating that the fall off route was going to be through EXO, and then they injected the player in there. Not just that, but the second fall off route for these roamers is then going down the cargo stairs, and that's being cut off by Vidiking on the other side. Now, Pampasu really doesn't have a lot of options for actually falling back off into <laughs> the bomb site. Now he's stuck here, and has got to take a fight instead. Yeah, and in fact, I don't know whether there's a pre-placed drone, there must be, but FaZe actually have a solid read on this. As they've Later. seen him move into Kitchen, Panda is a dead man walking, KDS doesn't have to make the move. NJR goes down, however, KDS will easily clean up Panda. and it's all up to Gavin now. Ooh, two quick kills, three more required, but the vertical line of sight will get the better of him. Beautiful work from Souls on the ram, and a fairly comfortable first round for FaZe. Great dissection of the map from FaZe. See, this is the FaZe formula, right? Uh, this is a roster that essentially has got like four players that are support players, right? And then and then Cyber, you know, the magic man. Uh, and what that means is that you have all these players that will be really cautious in their approach to the map and be very cautious about how to break things down because they'll always break things down by opening up a wall, throwing in some utility, uh, and they'll do something every step of the way that aids them uh, to get their job done without having brute forced it. And that's sort of the beauty of the support players. Vita King as well, he used to be that like Fragmite, like Thermite yeah. only open up the wall. But now being sort of the primary IGLing figure on the roster, bringing on all these extra support players, he's now got the flexibility to kind of do some more calling on different operators in different roles and get a bit more involved in the server. Yeah, very curious way to have your roster, right? It feels like these days, more and more teams are favoring picking up a lot of young gunners and 
getting them to be the primary fraggers and then you get your one experienced old guy to be that support player. Of course, Attackers it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's a digestible way to think mm. about it. And as you've described from FaZe, it's quite a, a departure from that. I must admit, I did thieve the point of Fox A, who's the real expert <laughs> on this. So uh, something that he did point out to me was KDS in particular, coming off of MIBR, he was the support player for MIBR, uh, now actually moving into FaZe. Uh, has then had to actually pick up some of that fragging um, potential, right? Because they've lost so much of it with bullet leaving, someone has had to fill in that, that, those shoes, and that's been KDS. And yet all of these players can frag. Doesn't mean if you're a support player or if you've had history as a support player, these guys are incredibly sharp. Well, good work so far as we're onto this uh, storage and control bomb site. A lot of the map supported by castle barricades and barbed wire and the Flores is making short work of that. Right on the other side does feel cautious of the cutoff uh, going into the cargo stairs and Souls meanwhile on the other side is going to try and make his way in through the ground floor. They want to use these for terror drones and really all of their drone work for players actually on drones at the moment uh, to their best potential to make sure that their first incision into the map is a safe one. The only player that's really off drones at the moment is Cyber who has a tendency to be on his own doing his thing and in fact he is the only person in the building for FaZe. He's right around the corner from Pamba and Gavin who are patiently waiting for someone to move out of IT. Cyber's trying to bait something but nothing bitten as of yet for DZ. They know that the onus is on their opponents to make moves. Now the prevalence of this vertical control from DZ will be felt when FaZe eventually go into that bomb site and find themselves meeting death from above. Here goes KDS, he moves in. Having to think about a player just coming down the cargo stairs, but actually there's no one there. There's one around the corner at the bottom of blue going into 90. Instead, Rice has heard that. He knows that there's a player there now. But the rest of FaZe Clan, what are they doing? They really look like they are posturing to hit the bomb site. They don't want to do this roam clear. And with the time ticking away, I think it's the right call. It's just about whether DZ are ready for that or not. It's a real game of cat and mouse. But in the 5v5, Mandy, I can't help but admit that I'm scared for FaZe's chances. There's so much plant denial from above and from below. Canadian here, KDS is looking for him and the opening kill is for FaZe. NJR under all kinds of pressure. Now as Vidikin starts to move into sight, Rice finds one, but here's Vidikin. He's in a great position. He's caught out by that device, but immediately he goes to plant and the rest of the team collapses on DZ. That's two straight for FaZe. Really good stuff there from FaZe. This feels a little bit like the FaZe identity of old, where they really just do not telegraph what is happening at all. Even though Canadian was on that info gathering operator of the Pulse, he had no idea what the FaZe players were, what the, um, FaZe players were trying to achieve there, right? They spent the entire time posturing around the map, trying to figure out what they wanted to do. They had four players at a time on drones. The only person that was active in the building was Cyber, and then KDS, after all that planning, just made one move, and that was go down to the basement and secure the one bit of intel that you need to clean up. And then off the back of that, the rest of the teammates completely collapsed in on the bomb site. We're going to see in the replays now. That's KDS to find the pivotal pick onto the one player inside of the basement that would have denied the diffuser from going down. And then at the same time, all of the players that were adjacent to the bomb site hopped in into the building and took down the remaining players of Dark Zero as they tried to retake the bomb site. So we didn't see a lot of the the eventual battle on the top floor, right? Because at the start of the round, there were two DZ players holding on to that map control. But at the end of it, Cyber dropped down a hatch from the top floor yeah. right near to the site. And so I can only assume that DZ Five slowly pulled back their three. players and FaZe eventually took that map control. Cyber drops a hatch Attackers and finds a 2K among with all these other things going on. It's just a great eventual collapse for FaZe. It felt like none of the gunfights that could have gone DZ's way did. It's a really tough call for DZ, right? Because, like, as the time ticks on, the gravity of the bomb site grows stronger for the attack. And so you know at some point, FaZe will be in the bomb site. So when do you make the call to bring back the rest of your defenders back in, right? Uh, if you call them back, then you leave room for Cyber to go and, like, run in and do something like that. But if you don't call them back, you get collapsed in on, and you don't know where from, because the entire time they haven't telegraphed where they're going. And that's the danger of FaZe Clan. We well, have to find a defense for DZ, but they will go back down to the basement once again. Assembly and tank. Last time around, they lost a lot of these players on the roam, and that really punished them. Now, they do have roamers, but they've switched up some of their players on who's 
doing the different operators. So this time it's Panda on the Solus instead of Canadian, and he is soloing on this top floor. He's been spotted, and now they'll E1D, and the drone will make his life a living hell. He rounds the corner, does a little bit of damage, but here comes Canadian, and the flank has gotten the first kill for DZ and bailed Pamba out of jail. Nice double trouble there from DZ, anticipating the pinch to come through from FaZe has enabled them now to get the first pick and fall off into the bomb site. Really good work so far from Dark Zero in the early game, but what that has afforded is vertical pressure now for FaZe. Yes, the buck has gone down, but Souls is still up um, on the ram and can make use of the floor. He can, but uh, I mean, the bomb site is all the way is the bomb site on the ground floor or the basement? I it's the it was... ground floor. Oh no, it's yeah, in the basement. The basement. I'm going yeah. crazy. So yeah, I mean, I I thought they didn't repeat the uh, the storage control like they just did. They went down to the basement, which they lost in the first round. Uh, but of course, they still need to clear storage and control because previously Panda on the Legion was roaming in that spot. Now this time around, of course, he's completely vacated that position. And DZ have their two roamers persisting at the top of the lobby stairs. But I could have sworn that a face player knows what's going on. They still haven't fallen off yet. Surely someone like KDS or Handy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there we go. KDS is definitely keeping them at bay, preventing them from falling off. But once again, holding hands are the two roamers of DZ, and they can get the trade off to KDS. Now, with the time ticking away, they do have the man advantage in the final 25 seconds of the round as they need to translate it into the basement. Oh, but it's just falling into the meat grinder. DZ is happy, waiting to receive Gavini. Find the final two kills, drop in the hatch. And DZ finally have their first round. Solid work there from DZ. I liked the adaptation to actually play a bit closer together, especially the Roamers. I thought that playing hand in hand was a much better idea than playing separated because it means that at least if you're close together, there's more trade potential. And I think that once that second trade had come through, especially onto KDS, the rest of the players on the bomb site felt like they couldn't be backstabbed, right? The push was going to come through onto the tank bomb site, was going to come down the Animus hatch and was going to be down cargo. And that, that was the only two things they had to worry about because KDS was taken down. Yeah, very desperate. Wow, this is Canadian's POV. I have no idea. Was he in con the whole time? There you go. KDS at the bottom of the lobby stairs, like you had said. But yeah, also Panda playing so close by. Really well played from DZ. Slow and steady. Don't overcomplicate things. Solid round for DZ, but can they keep the momentum going? I, I think that slowly but surely they are figuring out the formula against FaZe, and that's to play together. Make sure you can't get picked about, especially when you have a player like Cyber on the loose, just sort of running around on his own, given the intel of like four Jonas for the first like minute and a half of the round. That's not cool. You do not want to fall into that trap. Oh, very much so. And now you were talking about uh, momentum, right? Well, DZ, after winning that round, they don't have the ability to carry that momentum immediately back into the game because we've got this technical pause. As you guys can see, a lot of players are just chilling out at the moment. We're just re-hosting. We're getting everyone back in the server. And like we've said many times before, Mandy, at LAN, the admins are very diligent about making sure that this is a tech pause and not a tactical pause. So you won't be seeing strategy discussed from these players. They're just being told to hop back into the lobby. Gives us an opportunity for a break as well to chill out. Hmm. Stay hydrated. Yeah, it's good. Staying hydrated is good. Take a swig of this water. Very nice. I held down my cough button because you didn't want to hear that. <laughs> so hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like the the glug the glug noise is like part of no, the No, we don't need to we don't need to touch okay. on that. <laughs> we did that too much in Oast League. Yeah, we did we did do a lot of glug <laughs> This is a major! You're not allowed! That's not allowed! <laughs> anyway, Night Haven Labs. I really do feel like DZ can get themselves back into this because I really like the way that they play it. I feel like if there was any team to watch uh, play this map in NA, it was definitely these guys. They were certainly the merchants on it, some might say. Except against Sonics, apparently. Um, but alas. Twice, apparently. Yeah. I know. Sonics are uh, looking to be potentially NA's best hope at the moment with M80 going down and Space Station going down. Both of them uh, upset, quite surprisingly, I would say. And now we have DZ down one round, but not out by any stretch of the imagination. That said, FaZe have been pretty damn good. I certainly don't want to say it's like spoiled yet, you know? Mm. I, I feel like it's a very early call to say. These rounds have been 
I, I can only guess they'll probably be pretty back and forth at some point. I do have a question for you, Mandy. You've watched a lot of DZ. I know that. You also, you studied the hell out of the NA League Nighthaven. And you, you told me, I think, at the start of the season that you watched every single Nighthaven game in every region. Yes. Yes. That's true. So, one, two out of the first three rounds on your defense. Like, is that... Is that a good sign? Is that a bad sign? Should you really be? Is it like you should be winning three defenses? It should you should be winning half your defense. No, I don't know. More than half. I don't know. It's so round by round. You know, I feel like I know I sound like a broken record because I've been saying this through, like all of stage two, but it's like, especially with the way that bands go and stuff like that, it's like so round by round. I don't know. In theory, it's like no matter bomb what bomb side, uh, no matter what map it is, it should be defender sided because mm -hmm. like attacking is kind of hard at the moment. But you never know, especially on a map like Nighthaven where like the architecture can lean itself into attacks like what Faye's doing at the moment, where they're really breaking it down, can be attack sided. Well, for the first time, Mandy, we are seeing a new bomb site. We're seeing this uh, CCTV room uh, and server bomb site. A lot of ways that this can be played. If you've played a lot of Nighthaven in ranked, everyone picks this first, at least in my experience. Mm. Uh, sometimes you get the basement, but people tend to, to see a lot of this uh, at a very amateur level. But the pros, they have to think much more creatively and uh, one example of that is there's an actual rotation here uh, from CCTV into the, the hallway. Now, this is a very risky rotation because if you lose control of the top blue stairs, you are very exposed on the site. I like the adaptation as well from Dark Series to actually bring along like triple wall denial. Not only have they brought along the Bandit, but they've also brought along the Kaid and also the mute. Now, the way that Faye's been playing at the moment has been very much focused around opening up the, uh, the walls on the bomb site and, and cutting it down from there. So I think that making it tricky for them is probably the play. Well, the IT breach is step one of most attacks on this bomb site, and that is pretty straightforward and easy there. For Faye's nice nade to try and clear the batteries. Gavini is not going for the juggle. Oh, interesting. There's actually also no line of sight on yeah. the con wall. It looks like the rotate was made and now it's been reinforced over. I do quite like this from Dark Zero. It means that even though they are affording them IT control and rafters control, they're then not giving them direct access into the bomb site after that. And they're making them work for it through the mid rounds rather than working the exterior walls. Uh, like, like assume the exterior walls get open at some point in the round and then just work on the inside instead. Different approach. You can see how cautious FaZe are about this basement, how suspicious they are. Largely because they know that they're playing against Canadian. I'm not sure if they ever spotted him down there, but Canadian is a real pulse fiend. And so he will always be really keen to be down below where the attackers are and sensing their, their, their cardiac heartbeats and potentially looking for some Ooh. C4s. But what's this in the attack? They, they messed haven't, up. Haven't managed to get the wall open. No. Cyber threw their baby MPs too early. And as the uh, nade tried to sail through, okay, Cyber's realized that no! without the wall being open, he's got to brute force something inside a con, but NJR is going to take him down. They've really messed up the minigame here. I think Darkseer have got the read on exactly what they had to do to shut down the plan of phase. Yeah, you're right. It's all about this hard breach denial, and it has denied entry from phase getting into the bomb site. Canadian now left to his own devices as the rest of phase have bigger fish to fry than worrying about the pulse and the basement. Meanwhile, NJR has found his second. Pamba is so lucky to be alive on the solid ground right now. Handy goes in desperate. 30 seconds for FaZe, fighting from behind. Two players in deficit. NJR on the other side of this fight is slightly oh. angle, but the shotgun in hand is going to be able to take down Handy. Two more players now in IT. In fact, the remaining two of FaZe are going to have to go into the belly of the beast, but KDS can open things up. Thought NJR might be good for four there, but he's put down at three. Gavin's in a good position. This is nigh impossible. FaZe have no choice but to walk through this one doorway. However, it's not a crossfire. There's no one playing on their other side. Gavin, though, prone down below, and he will be spotted. He will be taken down, but there is no time to finish the round for FaZe. DZ even up this score. Look Good read from DZ, really shutting out their direct way into the bomb site. Like, yes, you can try and play uh, to shut out the external walls, but playing the mini game on the IT wall is way harder than actually playing the one on the triple wall. And deciding to keep that closed, not just keep that closed, but even the con wall closed. And then FaZe falling to their own missed timings as well, not landing the baby EMP at the same time as the grenade from below, meant that Electrical came back online uh, too early for the Selmas to actually go off. And from there on out, they, they only had to funnel uh, through doors and through windows into the bomb site. Really well read and, and well played as well from Darkseer. NJR with a shotgun in hand, close quarters. That's the gun you need. 
that was the C4. Wow, that's a good one. Definitely going to take notes about uh, that nice C4 outside the con window over... Nice fucking round, Nick. Nice fucking round. <laughs> <laughs> Audio guy was a little bit late on the fade of it. <laughs> um, sorry, I keep saying con. That's electrical, right? And we just yeah. threw it over the electrical thing. I don't know what it is. Ten what, what do you remaining. think that is? A, a generator? Box. A box? A nice piece of cover. Five seconds left. Yeah, that's the one. I don't want to get too technical with it. It's e box. <laughs> e box. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. Oh. There goes Jark Zero on a very successful defense, I would say, and that's even up the scoreline. And I think all the excitement that we had about the phase attack is starting to be pulled away, I would say, by DZ and their adaptations so far. Phase looking confident at the start here. They have wasted very little time at clearing this util once again, uh, this castle. The same as before for DZ, protecting that bomb site. Of course, we're control and storage at the moment. And here comes the twist drone now. This is new. What's he going to be able to achieve? Mostly just taking out the default cameras, but surely there are some higher priority targets. Well, I mean, by taking out the default cameras, it is setting themselves up to walk on in through the ground floor. But by doing that, it means that they've forgotten about the vertical pressure. Pampazoo able to take down the first player in handy, going in for the entry from up above, and it's forcing FaZe to look for other options. Vidiking's going to go down into the basement with his own hard breach to try and at least get some safe boots in the building. So did two of those players from FaZe just walk into the bomb site thinking that they were safe to do so. This is one of the hardest bomb sites to walk into because not only are you worrying about players in the room with you on the side, but you can get killed from below and you can get killed from above, which is what ended up being to their demise. Faze losing a little bit of the phase magic at the moment and I think changing the tempo in a way that's not that informed and it's cost them two of their picks. Dark Zero now they're in this position where they still do need to worry about pressure externally from the bomb site that FaZe might be looking for. I mean, just earlier we saw Vidiking look for something from the basement down up, but really all they need to do is consolidate their players, play co close together, don't afford them one versus ones, and hold the advantage from here on out. They hold that diffuser as well, which lies on the ground inside storage. Souls is in a good position. Bottom of garage, he's moving into the site. Oh, there's a player right in that corner. He sees him, but he can't quite land enough shots onto NJR, who's actually just going to gas himself into this position. KDS decides to move on forward looking for cargo, but KDS goes straight through the smoke to take down NJR. This does spring into action for FaZe, but DZ still have that diffuser, and so the pressure remains on FaZe. Vidiking to move on forward, straight into Gavin's waiting arms. Pam, but it close the last one. Oh, one more, one more. Let's get this half. One more for the half, as Troy said. That's it. This is really good stuff from DZ. They're, they're really now matching the pace of FaZe, realizing that they are going to take their time to do things. And that last round was the one round that FaZe actually tried to change the pace and do something early, but it was misinformed. It just didn't feel like a very smart play once they jumped in onto the bomb site. Pampers, you just had the vertical from above. And like you pointed out, even on that bomb site, you can also be killed from below as well. There's just a lot of stuff that you've got to worry about before you make that entry. And FaZe not quite accounting for everything. Yeah, and once again, uh, phase very quiet. DZ, yeah, no? Okay, like uh, yeah, DZ starting to really decide how they want to change up this defense. Remember, first time they played assembly and tank the basement, they lost it pretty badly, actually. Their roam just fell flat on its face. They go for the re-attempt, and that roam was perfect. It was mostly Panba on that roam, supported by Canadian. The two of them ran a mock upstairs. They found the first kill. They denied refrags, and then they later actually refragged, refragged each other roaming on the ground floor. And I'm curious, will DC continue that? type of setup, that type of pace. It looks like a lot of Rios are being committed Attackers offside, but will they also the commit the players there? Well, I think you kind of have to roam a little bit, especially on this bomb site that's so vulnerable to the vertical. And you can see on the side of the attack, both Cyber and Souls have brought operators with vertical potential on Buck and on Ram. So for Dark Zero, if they want to maintain a safe haven on the bomb site, yes, they do need to hold on to the ground floor for at least a little while. Now, how they do that this time around is a little bit different. Instead of bringing along the solos, they brought along NJR uh, on the on the pulse instead. 
not just that, but it does seem like it's going to be a pretty heavy fall off strategy, right? Because not only does NGL have a pulse and the C4, but so does Canadian and so does Gavanians as well. So if they can just waste a little bit of time and then fall back into the basement, they do still have the C4s to lean on. It's a good setup to do that, peeling back the layers of the onion type of round for the defense. And is trying to support these roamers with some information, but at the moment, all he's getting is information that there's nobody where he's looking at the moment on that ground floor. As KDS has thrown a nade up to enable a breach on this IT wall, but as we can see from the outlines, there are no defenders immediately close. Pamba is the closest one on this lesion, but he is so ready to fall back to Canadian. Five players on drones in those last 30 seconds. I mean, all of them are coming to life now, having uh, the info that they need to get their way in onto the ground floor. They've decided to forego completely the roam game of Dark Zero and start to shift their focus in towards the bomb side instead. The player inside the building is Cyber on the buck, and he's going to be the one looking located. to cut off the roamers. Oh, maybe not cut off the roamers, but actually go for the player inside of Cargo off the back of that info. Mm, Cyber might be able to find him. He's taken down that hatch as well, which does reduce somewhat the mobility of these players. Souls has found the opener here with the R4C on Ram. And Cyber's actually going to drop down. He's going for the prone holes. Meanwhile, Vidiking has moved into a plant spot. DZ, where's the plant denial? Where is the proactivity? They had no clue whatsoever. But this retake is so achievable. Double for Cavini. Handy and Vidiking now, the two hard breaches to try and cover this diffuser. Quite awkward placement. They will have to swing fairly wide in order to deny this plant, but Handy above is in the perfect position. I think Pamba knows. NJR to get himself some information with the cardiac sensor as well, as uh, Handy has the perfect position to deny this. Vidiking will have to swing wide. He gets NJR. Is there a trade? There is. Three for Gavin. Handy from above is able to deny, and that means there is no chance Pamba can clutch this. Phaser back in it, baby. Three rounds each. Fantastic post plan as well from Phase. They decided that the roam clear was too hard with what they had. Well, maybe it wasn't too hard, but they decided that they could forego it anyway. They had so much map control that all they needed to do from there was just translate it down inside a tank. And if you want to go for a tank execute, you don't want to go in through something from assembly or whatever. You don't want to clear the mirror. You don't actually need the vertical pressure. And so they completely bluffed it, basically, and just decided to hit the bomb site instead off the back of the control they managed to get through Adamus. Vidiking as well making a great call at that point to decide to uh, shift their focus in towards the bomb site, knowing he'd, knowing he'd opened up um, the wall beforehand. It was such a good pivot uh, from FaZe Clan that really caught off Dark Zero. Hey, what blows my mind is that they were able to plant in that spot in uh, in tank. Like that's a, a really exposed position. Uh, there are doors onto both of the other rooms on the bomb side and to the bottom of the uh, the cargo stairs. And anyone who's actually playing in tank, who could have fallen and simply just denied that plant. Well, that's the thing. That's why Cyber had to make his play first, right? Cyber was the one, the only person at the t at, in the building at the time, right? He was the sole player uh, for FaZe that actually made something happen. And the one thing that he did make happen was clear that player in cargo. And that was the only person that could really deny the plant from there. After that, Souls made his entry into the bomb site, And once those two things went right, it was over. We just saw in that replay as well, the needle that had to be threaded by Vidiking in order to deny that plant in the dying moments. Uh, deny the diffuser, rather. Dark Zero got so very close to winning that retake, and yet it's just barely brought over the line. And now we're brought into the second half without the win that DZ was looking for. Clan now swapping over to their defending half are going to bring us down to the exact same bomb site that they just landed a successful attack on, and that's down in the basement. Souls actually, even on the smoke, has, has looked for this roam extended out into the ground floor. Meanwhile, Rice, the support on the other side, is going to make his work on the assembly wall. Vidiking going to try and challenge this, though, with a C4. So he's going to try and throw this out at the perfect time as soon as the wall becomes soft, will he? Oh, no. Actually throws out a little bit early, I think, hoping that the explosive radius uh, would go through the hole at the bottom and, and kill the Maverick on the other side. As we can see, no damage whatsoever. Safe work on the walls so far for Dark Zero, but where's the rest of the push coming from? It's actually Gavaini and Pambazoo over on the ground floor. Two starts to make this roam clear work. There's quite a big presence on the side of FaZe on 
on that ground floor and Canadian's going to try and double down with a pinch. It's a nice little setup as well with that hard breach. Will deny a lot of those cheeky positions in vending that otherwise can be quite fickle, but Souls is still relatively nearby. He's got a couple of angles he can utilize. Handy as well to support. This is still a lot of ground floor control for FaZe. Souls is in a good spot here in storage. There's really no one that's going to be able to cut him off from actually going into garage if he decides to. Not just that, but Cyber as well in the hallway is going to support his teammate, preventing any of the players from uh, going for the backstab into cargo, which will be the fall off route for these roamers. But the Romans don't need to fall off as of yet because they've got such solid positions that DZ are not flushing out. DZ now are looking to pivot, in fact. Two players going outside once again. Pam are looking to go onto the top floor. There's only 35 seconds. What is their play? I quite like this from Canadian, actually. He's got the diffuser in his hands and he knows if he goes into EXO, he can get into the blind spot where he can then plant, but it's been smoked off. Is there time? I don't think there's time, Mandy. Have a look at that. Soul still has one gas remaining, and he's going to deploy that now. There will be about 10 seconds off the round. Canadian decides to go deep. A very risky play, and it doesn't pan out for DC. He had to wait. He had to let the smoke subside, but FaZe instead, they will not abide. Pamba, the last one standing. He's so far from everyone else, and he has no chance of getting that diffuser back or even finding a consolation frag. The timer runs out. And so does the advantage for DZ. Dark Zero taking way too long to make their decision on the execute. They kept very much accountable by the smoke and they had to change what they did in the last second and go for a flood and they were completely punished for it. We've got Laxing on the line. Laxing, what do you say about your American boys? It's, it's an interesting game. Both teams are playing very similar in terms of the play style. So they either put too much emphasis on trying to clear Rome and stalling time, or what we just even saw in that round from Dark Zero switching to the attack side, is they are just as slow as phases in terms of what they're deciding to do, where then they're going for the instant rush and being met by smokes, being met by all sorts of utils. So this is a game of who's going to adapt quicker and understand that they might need to ramp up the play and ramp up the speed of these rounds in order to take whether that's taking map control whether that's getting the first couple early picks and then backtracking off that one of these teams in my opinion has to play more aggressive on that attacking side and if if dz does pick up on that i can see dz running away with this thank you very much laxing good insight there as we've just got one round into the second, second half insertion. so far and phase have stolen that advantage just barely though five seconds to insertion Interesting spot Attack now for FaZe. They've actually decided to bomb. jump back down to the ground floor and bring us over to storage and control room as the second bomb side of choice, having won the basement, of course. I liked Laxing's comment about the similarities between their playstyle, but I do feel like Pamazoo jumping on the nook might change things up a little bit. Pamazoo, he really is a, a true entry, in my opinion. He's he is that player that can set the tempo especially between the 10 players in this server right now. If there is someone to do it, surely it's going to be Pambo. I'm not sure if you caught that. Was that a, a Yokai drone that Canadian was able to get inside the bomb site with the Twitch drone? That was. Wow, that's a huge advantage very early on. Less than 40 seconds into the round, you're already taking out Yokai drones. That's massive. He's going to look for more value as well to try and set up the execute. Oh, actually not. NJR just looking to open up a wall inside of the Raj. And what that's going to do is it is going to put some pressure over on the anchors on the bomb site. KDS is going to have heard that go off and he's going to call out to his teammates. They're having to think about garage now, guys. Uh, maybe think about coming back to the bomb site or uh, whatever it might take for FaZe to keep a grip on the bomb site itself. I'll tell you what, Mandy, I don't think I have seen a Twitch drone get that much value in a long time. That was very good. He got banner batteries. I don't think he got any uh, Fenrir devices, but he got damn close to doing so. He found a Yokai drone. You got all kinds of information. Hang on a second. Cyber's got to have some kind of information to enable that C4. Gavin goes down. The hard breach all falls upon NJR now. And the Lion Scan's going to ring true. I can hear but a Pamazoo just getting on his gadget at the moment to try and inject himself into the building, but it's actually Canadian over on the ground floor to make the first oh, incident Canadian. into the building. Oh, he almost claims the life of KDS on the other side and he can finish the kill. Yeah, that was a little bit of a misnomer there for KDS. He had no clue. Panda's actually walked his way right into the site. Canadian has that diffuser, but there is a line of sight above. Panda's going to try and nade this, but it doesn't do any damage. Rice finds Cyber. 
Canadian needs to find a place to plant. As sneaking down the blue stairs, Handy looks for something but is immediately shut down. The coverage is perfect as Souls has nothing but his gun to try and deny the plan, and he doesn't even get that. A beautiful attack from DZ. A great dissection of the map as well from Dark Zero. They really took their time uh, to find a safe haven for their players to inject themselves into the map. It wasn't done with too much haste, and I just feel like the way that they were able to move in through the map really caught phase off guard. Canadian, we were on board with him uh, taking one onto KDS. I really don't think KDS was ready for that at all. Even the kills that went down in the top floor felt quite explosive, like a mini style execute um, from Dark Zero that they were able to translate into the bomb site later on. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more conversation, <laughs> but that's pretty chill. I guess they didn't need to say anything after a round like that. It really does speak for itself. DZ looking very fired up. A couple more attacks like that, and FaZe will stand no chance. I do quite like the brand of Siege that both these teams are playing right now, to be honest. Everything that they do is trying to pull a reaction from the other team, right? Remaining. You do something, and then you don't immediately try and benefit off the back left. of what you just did. You just wait to see how your opponents will react to it and then react to their reaction the after that. It feels like very like multi-layered thinking Rainbow Six. And I feel like both of these teams in their play style, yes, it makes for a rather slow game, but it makes for quite an intricate one. I'm reacting to your reaction to my reaction to your reaction. I love that. Now, what is the idea for FaZe to try and mix things up? Oh, what a shot there from Cyber. Running a muck on the ground floor. He turns a corner and gets a very swift shot on the pan. But, oh, another one! How does he keep getting away with this? He's just running with no care in the world, and he's taken down two pivotal players from DZ. Oh, man, he should not have been allowed to collect that second kill onto Rice. Man was there on the cutoff, and he had it robbed by Cyber, who's now got a C4 ripped. He knows there's a player about to jump in through storage, but it doesn't connect. Whoever's outside of there is lucky to get away with their life, so not onto storage, onto... What's the room called? Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Pool? It's not vending. Vending is the room next to it. Pool? I've lost it. Maybe it's pool. Games? I don't know. That um, sounds wrong, you know? Anyway, I'm a fraud. There's a pool table in it. Fraud color cast job. Kivani making his way into garage and said thinks the better of it. It is, in fact, a rather one way angle if you're a defender over on rafters onto that breach. And so NJR instead is going to put the pressure over on IT. Okay. Vidiking electrical got good vert Bomb capability. In the back of my mind, I'm still wondering what Cyber is intending to do here because he's been on this roam for a long time. He doesn't want to lose his life. Of course, he's not going to win the next gunfight, chances are, because of his HP. He's actually getting very close here to Canadian, who's still hyper-cautious of that roam game. So a good move from Cyber not to over-aggress. But these attackers now are finally starting to contest upstairs. This Canadian takes a bunch of damage from the drone hole next to him, as well as across inside the bomb site. Very relaxed are the defenders on the side of FaZe Clan. They pretty much know that it's pretty linear push from here on out for Dark Zero. They don't have a whole lot of options with the control that they have over in Garage and over in IT. They're going to do their best to make this funnel work off the back of the grim of oh, Canadian, no. but sticking a face in the rotate to try and put it down is not the safest thing to do, but there goes NJR for pick on his own. Four versus two, though. Tough situation for Dark Zero to come back from. Especially when NJR is shut out of the position once again. Funny, the only player that was taken down was the one that was on barely any HP to begin with, so a massive favor for phase okay gavin a couple more of those please but handy doesn't give him the opportunity a good trade for njr two more kills needed with 11 seconds but the crossfire is simply too good for phase and once again advantage for the brazilians yeah off the back of that 2k from cyber it just looked like smooth sailing from there on out all they had to do was play the man advantage hold the crossfires and really dark zero didn't have that much map control off the back of that they had to do something pretty linear and it didn't quite work out in their favor, which I think is fair enough. Cyber made a massive play early on in the round and they should be rewarded for it. Now we've got this DZ tactical timeout. Let's see what Mint has to say. Um, we could just go for actual as well. Just 
open both walls. I mean, they did have three inside the smoke board and Yeah, one inside. They just had so many holes. I think. And yeah. I think Troy might just need to go like. Yeah. He's gonna have to make sure D mine isn't on it. So DZ really fine. discussing the very low level stuff like really we were well. talking before. Is it you high level or is it low level? Like you take the it's very uh, very technical the things take that are being discussed here about this next attack. I mean I guess you don't need it. They are thinking about the thing that Laxing is telling them to think about though. What they're thinking about is tempo and pacing. They have so many holes, do you really want to face them or do you just want to inject yourself in? That was the conversation that NJR was trying to head by saying maybe Canadians should just get on Blitz. Mm. Well, after last round, they certainly need to, to flip something up. And I think just a little bit of caution in the early round also won't go astray. I don't know what Cyber's intention was, to be honest, at the start of last round. He was just sprinting all around the ground floor. But when you find two headshots, you really cannot question anything. And as you said it, Mandy, it looks like Canadian will indeed be sticking this blitz. No, if you're cyber, you should get the license to run around, I reckon. <laughs> if there is one player Ten on FaZe Clan that's allowed to do it, cyber, for sure. Anyway, alas, yeah, it seems like Canadian is Five sticking this blitz left. idea. And that does make me think that Dark Zero are having a, a go at changing the Attack tempo, which I, I really like. I think that's the one thing that Laxing pointed out in his, um, in his analysis of the game. And I think it will really change um, the feel and the tone of the game if they can land this. I mean, uh, this is the point where you have to do it, because if not, FaZe find match point. Changing max. DZ did not have an easy run to get here into FaZe 2. They, uh, of course, almost went down to Fury. It came down to an 8-7. And there were some damn devilish rounds in that as well. But this is also the same team that took G2 to overtime. So DZ have huge potential and they're certainly not looking to start their Swiss phase with an opening loss to phase. Here goes NJR once again to help out Bryce on his uh, clear of the assembly wall. Once again, Vidiking on the other side reckons he's got a better angle for the C4. See if he can land it. Yeah, he's going to rip it. Did the Mav hear that? I feel like Rice yeah, heard it. The, the way that Rice moved away. He definitely heard the rip of that C4. Was it a bait from Vidiking though? He's in. What's Pamba cooking? They've definitely realized that they've got a hole in the lobby side of the map. Oh, but there's a player there on the lobby stairs. Who is that? Oh, okay, Cyber. He can take him down. Cyber, he goes down without a fight. That's quite the opposite of what we expect out of Cyber. Last round, he found two unreal picks very early on and it spelled death for DZ. Now, very much the opposite. He's caught in a terrible position and easily taken down with no impact whatsoever. Souls still on this roam, on the smoke no less. If he's not able to be on site to support his team, he needs to have an impact felt on the roam. It might not matter. This roam really might not matter. They might just have the cutoff off the back of the Nomad. All they need to do now is send the Blitz in down through Exo and once again go for the safe plant in the blind spot. The smoke isn't there to cover them this time. It's really going to be on the onus of Pampazoo to make sure that his teammates are safe when they go for the execute. Yeah, this is super dangerous. As you said, the smoke is off site and that's the operator you need to deal with the Ying and Blitz execute, which will no doubt start to come down. Handy is all the way on the top floor as well. There's only two players on site for FaZe. These roamers must have an impact. Vita King, though, he's on the other side of what this potential execute could be, and he's the Warden as well. If he's in the right place at the right time, when the Ying comes through and the Blitz comes through, he could spell disaster for Dark Seer, but I have a feeling that Dark Seer have got the read on this one. They're actually not going for an exoplanet, Mandy. They've rotated now because they don't want to have to clear out the vertical player above. Souls, though, he is that vertical player, and he's gone down. KDS on the side must be called upon. He finds one, and Handy will need to have an impact on this room. KDS, three kills! How does he keep doing it? Eventually he goes down, but it might not be enough for DZ to stay in the round. Handy, all he has to do is survive because the diffuser is too far to plant. And with that phase, they've got match point out of nowhere. Dark Zero falling to their indecision through the mid rounds. They had the map control they needed to land and execute, but they felt like EXO was too dangerous and rotating over to assembly was just not the play. KDS was there and he's ready to meet them. Canadian 
Canadian got shot as he was trying to enter in through the breach with the diffuser in his hands, and he put it cold on the ground in a position that Dark Zero were not ready to pick up from. I, I feel like if they had dedicated themselves to actually doing one execute in through the mid round and not taking too long to do it, I reckon they could have done it. And even though it might, and I guess we can be hindsight Harry's about it, I guess, but even though it might have felt like the, the right what? way at the right time to go into assembly, like what's going on here on the ground floor? You know, there's just. Souls is running out of garage. There was so okay. much going on in the execute phase there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know when Handy managed to get back to site either because we last saw him top garage. But, I mean, FaZe are very, very lucky that they won that round. And really, there's one reason. It's KDS. Ten seconds to go. I think yes and no. I, I think partially they were lucky, but I mean, Kadius was so ready for that. And even though Vidikin got taken down, like within the chaos of that execute going down, he kind of did what he had to do. And he was like sort of just disruptive on whatever was coming down from Exo stairs through the vertical. I just feel like FaZe, even though, yes, they were sort of spread thin in that execute, they knew what to do. And um, Kadius was just in the right place at the right time. Okay, Cyber. Let's see what you got, man. Deploying sensor. Very cheeky spawn peak here. He died with no effect in the previous round. Doesn't look like DZ is going to cross his line of sight anytime soon. He's really been patient about this one. Okay. Decides to fall off it in the end. The rest of Dark Zero, though, what are they posturing for? It is over down in the kitchen cafeteria, uh, bomb side, and. Uh, that means I've got a few options here, right? With the Thermite in hand, do they want to then just do something linear over in Lobby? But they've also got the Ram on Gavaini, so maybe they want vertical control. There are a couple things that they could be thinking about here, but we'll see what they do. Mm, I hear a pre-placed C4. Where is that? Somewhere likely on the vertical. I mean, in conference, it's such a dangerous place to to move into. However, Gavin being on this RAM, like you said, it's a perfect operator for dealing with pre-placed C4s because you just chuck those down. You don't worry too much about your own safety. NJR is just getting a bit of drone work done here on the lobby side. He spots a mirror and he says, oh, okay, I was hoping to thermite that wall and now I can't. It does look like a lobby take will be on the cards for Dark Zero, but I think like you pointed out, they may be playing into the defensive what setup that FaZe Clan have brought him. This is a really nice off angle from Cyber. Having been missed drones on the cross, he finds the timing to get right into the corner of lobby. Yeah, and he's getting Souls to bait for him as well. They're playing aggressive here. Now Souls has been droned once again. NJR does a bit of damage, but not enough to get the kill. Cyber missed the headshot and he's punished for it. Souls, his C4 completely disregarded and Gavini does take him on down. As Cyber eventually does find Panbar, but it's chaos elsewhere as Canadians find a double. We maybe will not be finished just yet as Canadian has found his third and Vidiking is the only player left standing. Excellent mini execute there from Dark Zero all the way over on the lobby stairs. They collapsed in from the lobby itself and in meeting to make sure that they could take down all three players that were situated in that position, especially Canadian coming in from his backstab, able to collect up three and it's left Vidiking all alone. Well, here comes Canadian looking for another one. There's a good pick as the rookie goes down with the king. It's a difficult clutch now, especially with the plant going down right next to that window. He needs to catch this player on the rotate. He does. Okay, that's winnable. 1v2 and NJR is such low HP. Oh, good info, Gavin. Don't fall apart now. NJR has revealed his position as well by hitting that, but this is a perfect plan spot. It's far enough away from the window that it's going to be so hard for Vidiking to win this. He will have to fake it. Only one bullet required onto NJR. Gavin elsewhere. Vidiking has no idea of his position. And look at that timer. It takes seven seconds to commit to this. He has no choice but to commit now. He needs this final kill. He can't fake it any longer. And NJR can easily look to lock in the rounds. Vidiking might have got the kill, but the last laugh is for DZ as they hold on for a round longer. Excellent clear there of the lobby hold. They saw the problem that was in front of them and they thought we have the tools that we need to face it. Uh, sometimes it can be really tough in that situation to call, do we actually face the resistance that's in front of us and problem solve it? Or do they then try and take the path of least resistance? And I really liked that DZ with the utility and everything that they had when we know how to do this, we can actually clear this of what we have. And I think you making the call on the Gram as well was perfect. That C4 that was pre-placed for the meeting hop in was gone by the time that the Ram got in there. Not just that, but Handy even with the shield on top main, that was completely nullified by the pinch that came in through lobby. Really well played from Dark Zero.
you said you are going to go through it, Rob. Yeah, and now one more round is required to push OT. This is that 3K from Canadian. How did FaZe not expect a player to be watching this hallway? That's fish in apparel. I mean, that is uh, well played from Canadian, but it's not like that was stellar or anything. It, well, it didn't require the most crazy gunplay or anything like that. I don't know what FaZe were doing exposing themselves to that hallway. They're going to take us back up to the top floor, our face line. They really don't want to repeat uh, what they have just fallen to on the ground floor. Five seconds remaining. Now, last time that we saw Dark Zero play this top floor bomb site, they had a nice adaptation. They actually closed out all the interior walls by bringing along the triple uh, hard breach denial, and it works out super well against Dark Zero, but the philosophy of phase is quite different. They're only bringing along one set of anti hard breach in the bandit, and instead um, they've just got something that's more leaning into a sort of like your anchor late game anti execute utility. Not only do you have your mirror, but you've got your smoke and your Fenrir as well to make sure that even though they do actually have a grip on the outside of the bomb site, it's going to be very hard to get in. It's a good try, though. Pam's in a great position to contest this top blue doorway, but here's a Candela. Handy is the perfect operator for this. They're really going to commit to this? Like, surely Handy will fall back. No, he's still playing quite aggressively here. Pamba drones it once again, but the gas will guarantee, surely, that no one can win this. Handy goes in. Pamba goes in deep, but it's a direct trade as Souls is able to finish off Pamba, who was down on the ground after that shotgun blast. It's kind of worth it to be honest, a little bit for the attack. It does mean that your smokes are going down. And we have seen just how important smoke has been come the late game uh, for the attack. It really has stunted out so many of these late 20 second executes that have come through in the series so far. That being said, if you want to talk about the flip side, a lot of the utility on the ying is made for the execute as well, right? So it very much is like a one-to-one -one situational trade between these two teams. Well, at least for DZ, they've still got the hard breach to open up this IT wall, which they have now done. I believe the con wall is actually reinforced and not made with the rotator line of sight for phase, as some teams I want to do. And this is really nice. This is what has been lacking thus far, is hard breach on the rafters wall, straight into sight. That is the way the DZ will be able to flush out these site positions. That being said, FaZe have now flipped their setup. They've realized that it's not safe to play in the actual uh, control room itself. And now, oh, sorry, what is it called? The CC, command center. Yeah. I know there's so many things that start with C. Yeah. Anyway, the command center itself, and they've then gone and flipped it inside of blue and in through the hallway instead. So nice adaptation from FaZe, but they do have to worry about the backstab if it comes through from the balcony. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Yeah, Onus is on DZ here in this 4v4 as Rice and NJR rotate over. They will be heard by Cyber, but it doesn't matter because NJR gets that kill despite the Fenrir's Dreadmine. There is another player on the other side. It's Souls looking to get aggressive, looking for a refrag, but the flash will force him back. Gavin finds a big pick on the KDS as the bees restrict KDS's movement. And so NJR moves in to his demise. But it's back and forth. Vidiking now must clutch for FaZe as Canadian and Rice know exactly where he is. Canadian fires up and pushes us into OT. Great read again from Dark Zero. They knew what the win condition of that round was, and that was to dislodge the players at top blue and make it so uncomfortable for the defense to then play in their power positions. Last time that we saw DZ do this attack, they didn't have the manpower to make that flip across and actually go for a pinch in the top floor. They could only do something linear because the, the time app got shut out for them, right? This time around, because they were more successful in the early round, they had the redundancy in numbers to then send a few players over top blue and actually make the pinch work out yeah really well played from DZ despite losing a player early right like they did get one kill but it cost them a player to do so which is why I'm impressed that they were able to do what you're saying and do that split push in at the end I think a lot of teams would have stacked most of their players on rafters where that breach came down but the pivotal moment for Dark Zero in the end was this from NJR, taking down Cyber and then continuing to put pressure on the site from the top blue stairs. Oh, Vita King, man. It's gutting. Yeah, it's gutting. It really is. Like, he almost did it, especially with the Fenrir in the hands. Like, it was such a doable moment in the two versus one, but it happens, and now they're in overtime. I feel like, honestly, this game is so deserving of overtime. The way that these two teams have been playing has been so back and forth, so similar, their identity in their play style on this map, and 
I think they're going to be very tested, especially with Dark Zero starting out on the attack. Uh, DZ have had some great attacks, but this has been a perfectly even game. Both halves, three attacks and three defenses for both teams. DZ have that momentum, though. They've just pulled it back from a 6-4 deficit. Here goes DZ on their roam clear of the map. It doesn't look like the strategy has changed all that much on the side of Faceland. I mean, Cybers actually brought along the castle um, by himself. I, I didn't really actually pay that much attention to where those castle barricades went down, but maybe they've actually segmented off a part of oh, the map. What? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I quite like this. It means that by taking away the, the angle in Con, he just has to worry about like finding E and finding IT and whatever. And so his full off route's gonna probably like blue or garage or depending on like how they flipped their um, roam clear or whatever. But it doesn't really matter anyway, because Dark Zero are starting to work the wall and KDS is on the other side of this instead of Vidiking with impacts. Um, I don't think it's gonna do much different. Oh, no. I think KDS has just gotta watch the wall be open. No, Rice. Yeah. Oh, he's made a rookie mistake. He's missed a tiny bit of that wall with the Maverick Torch. And now in order to get it, he will have to cross that line of sight and he's low HP already. Vidiking also here with a C4. Face kind of read this. This is perfect, but NJR comes on and bails him out with a secondary hard breach. Still, that's a far cry from what DZ were hoping for. Not so good. Now they can't quite make the entry into the bomb site. Like, yes, there's a line of sight off the back of the vault hole, and yes, it is a vault hole, but it's not as viable of an entry because you can't just, like, hold your gun up in and be stuck in that animation of vaulting, right? Oh, Pambazoo, though, taken down what? very low. Cyber, I believe, was the UMP to ring out onto him all the way from above. Because they haven't cleared out Cyber in oh, his no. safe haven with his castle barricades, he can also take down Canadian. And the hard breach charge on the hatch to boot. This turns the round on its head now for Dark Zero, who are yet to clear out souls here from control. And you can see Gavin's expression and his position. There's no second chances. They have to commit here to site. There are too many roamers still at large. And the site pressure has been fairly piss poor for DZ thus far. A lot of places with a lot of HP damage and KDS holds down the line for three kills. FaZe Clan looking mighty fine here. And match point. Another opportunity will arise. NJR in a 1v5, doomed to die. Desperate to make a difference, but he will fall to KDS's four kills defending the site. A third match point now available for FaZe. Cyber held him accountable in the ground floor there by not clearing him out. He had full control of the vertical, and I really thought that the castle was such an odd pick, especially for a player like Cyber, who you know, kind of likes to run around a little bit. You know, we saw him on the Bandit. We so, saw him just do his own thing. You get Castle and he just like creates a fortress in the top floor that Dark Zero like, what? You know, like whatever, you know, but you know, when you don't take it seriously, Cyber's there through the vertical to shut you down. Yeah, that's the thing. It's so strange seeing Cyber play a, a passive position like that or a, a, a single position where he's not going to move around that much. He said, this is my domain. I have a job, which is denying entry here and here and here. And he did just that. DZ looked lost. And now FaZe have taken their tactical timeout on match point. They've had two chances so far and they couldn't close it out. Let's see if third time's the charm. Rice as well, really unfortunate on his rookie mistake. Uh, just missing that little part of the wall did mean that uh, the second option that Dark Zero did have to get into the bomb site, and that was through assembly, was also shut out. And that's why you saw three players walk down the exo stairs because they had nowhere else to go after that. Baseline just played it so well. Yeah, it was nuts from Cyber and KDS, man. He has turned it up in this game. Ever since the rehost in the first half, Mandy, he's had 11 kills. 11 kills. That's a lot of kills. It is. And so impactful. So many multi-kills as well. So many times people are flooding into site. DZ looking for a last-ditch effort, looking to do an SSG. And KDS says that's not going to happen. Potential final bomb site for Dark Zero. They're taking us over to storage and control. Set up on the ground floor, aided left. by the castle barricades of Gavaini. Seems like he really wants to lock out the control uh, inside of Garage, right? Uh, those two castle barricades that are going down inside of the hallway uh, really mean that even if the attack does that, does eventually get garage control, they have to translate it then into storage, for example. And the rest of Dark Zero are looking to extend their way out uh, across the map instead. 
Uh, last time DZ attacked this, they had their best round, arguably, of the game. And FaZe, as a result, opted not to pick it at all in the half after that. Remember this one? We saw Canadian after the round ended, and he says, beautiful round, boys. And it really was. DZ was so good, but let's see if FaZe on their attack can do anything better. It's a hard bomb site to crack this one. There's a lot of map to clear. The player that I'm worried about, if I'm Dark Zero, is... Oh, okay, hang on, the line scan's running out. Let's see what's going off the back of that. Okay, KDS. That was... This is the player that I would be worried about if I was Dark Zero right now. KDS has got a lot of info on the Brava, and he's one of those players that will eventually inject himself into the map somewhere off the back of all the info that he's got. Now, meanwhile, the rest of FaZe, with a hard breach in hand, double hard breach, in fact, will look to dissect the rest of the map. Cyber's putting pressure here on Canadian by opening that kitchen window. A lot of things to worry about for Canadian. Rice also separate. As you said, on that roam, Stay back. where are the rest of FaZe? Where is the, the push coming through? These castle barricades slowly but surely being whittled away by Souls as ex Kairos. And Vidiking is always present, just close to the site window, ready to jump in as soon as the progress has been made and the call is ready for an execute. They are having to think about it. They are certainly having a think off the back of the info that's come out, not just that, but the lion scan as well. Handy making his way down the garage stairs and no resistance to meet him just yet. Second player from FaZe to move in as well. DZ do have their smoke. NJR, oh, he's in a pivotal position. He whiffs the shot. He can't get aggro because there's players further back. And now the E1D will lock him in place. He decides to move regardless. He escapes, but that does open the door for FaZe to enter the site. Vidiking jumps in. The gas just misses. And he still has this diffuser. Souls is going to have to cover as Vidiking forces this down. Where's the plant denial? DZ have nobody above, nobody below. And Handy can easily guarantee that that plant will go down. Dark Zero now on for the retake. It's Rice to creep his way in through storage. But I believe that there is still a player above. There goes NJR on his first bit for Cadius to draw one back. 28 seconds and ticking down as Rice is right next to the diffuser. It is tantalizing as he's able to start it. Oh, but where's FaZe Clan? FaZe Clan are desperate now. That's where they are. They're also so patient. Rice has to push to OT. But KDS has the better super shorty and FaZe Take down DZ, 8-6 on Nighthaven Labs. A grueling match, but a sigh of relief for the Brazilians as they take it handily. Really solid execute as well from FaZe. Measure twice, cut once, I think, was the phrase of the game, I would say, between both of these teams. But FaZe, they just take one step ahead of the game. Another overtime for DZ and a grueling loss as well. An extremely valiant effort, but FaZe was too strong. That final round of attack, there was an opportunity there that they would not let miss. And with that, I mean, FaZe, a good start to their campaign here at the Atlanta Major. This was their first match. A nice win, but a lot closer than I think many people expected. Yeah, for sure. Dark Zero, they really put up a good fight there on Labs. And I mean, look, Dark Zero kind of are like Labs merchants a little bit, but... <laughs> Yeah, against FaZe Clan, I think they very much got a taste of their own medicine and of their own play style. And, and I think FaZe just today, either it was a good day for them or somehow they were just one small step ahead. It was the small differences that I think uh, really told the tale against these two teams. Well, FaZe had a phenomenal performance, especially KDS top fragging his team, top fragging the server. We've got him on for an interview with the desk. Devin Mandy, thank you so much. And that is correct. We are with KDS. Man, that was an absolute dogfight. Tell me, how was your team able to pull away in the end there? And what was going through y'all's heads? Uh, I think we came. My English is not so good, so <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're great. <laughs> I think it's tough. Uh, the defense uh, side for, for us, we, we expect them more easy, mm -hmm. but we. When the half uh, stop the match, we uh, talking, we can make. I mean, that about 
does it, yeah. right? That's exactly what happened. Uh, that was a fantastic victory. I, I do want to pick your brain a little bit about how you're feeling confidence-wise. I mean, this is a big win for y'all. Are you feeling good? Yes, yeah, we are feeling very good. Our team is very together in the event. We are very confident and we are very happy to Again. Happy and confident, I like that. <laughs> so you played on Nighthaven. Um, how come you chose to play Dark Zero on Nighthaven? Uh, we ex expected Night Lab uh, or Club House, but yep. uh, Night Heaven we play a lot in BR6. Yep. So we, are, we have a good experience and we can beat DZ. Cool. Um, so this is your first game at the tournament? Yes. Do you think that's an advantage, the fact you've come in at Phase 2? Or do you, would you have preferred to play in Phase 1 and have played a few games? Oh, Phase 2 is so much cool. cool. So much better, yeah? <laughs> yes. Play the playoffs and yeah. Were there any big takeaways from this series? Anything that you're going to take away moving forward? What? I don't, I don't Anything understand. that you took from this match moving forward that you're like, okay, we want to keep this in mind later? Ah, well, I think we can uh, make our best defense. I think the defense side of us, we want rounds. If triple kills or double kills, Attackers. not so good. So we can be better than this. Okay, great. great. Um, my last question, anything that you want to say to the fans and everybody who admires you and is uh, keeping an eye on you today? Can you speak in Portuguese? Yeah, go okay. for it, of course. Obrigado aí, rapaziada, que acompanha agora o nosso jogo aí da FaZe. Espere boas partidas da gente e tamo junto. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, KDS. Really Thank appreciate you. that interview. You go enjoy that victory. And we're switching headsets here. We got Mr. Laxine joining us. All right. Last match finished. Yep. You know, it's interesting. We were all chatting, and it was obviously a very tight match, but it was kind of a slower pace at times. Am I wrong? Yeah, it absolutely was. I think we saw FaZe, especially on their attack, try a couple of very fast and direct takes. Mm -hmm. DZ shut that down remarkably. And then from their phase, we're a little bit more considered, a little bit more balanced. And I think with Dark Zero, you're always going to get a very slow approach in terms of the way that they want to play as well. Yeah, and it's a slow, methodical gameplay that both these teams played that we saw, that which is why there was such big hang up. And you were saying we did see some of those try to fast rounds happen. But yeah. DZ is a really good team at keeping structure and keeping solid in those rounds to so immediately shut that down. There's one round specifically during round five. I don't know if you remember it, but they had Troy below holding the bomb, feeding that information. Yeah. They had NJR holding the smoke, delaying as much time as possible, basically being a sacrifice to delay as much time as possible. And it just goes into just DZ playing those hard sights really hard, stopping any of those fast aggression pushes from FaZe. And overall, I mean, it was it was just, yeah, it was just a really slow game. And then FaZe just kind of clawed away with it. Okay, so what fell apart for Dark Zero in the end? Um, honestly, I think you could take it all the way to that very last round. Okay. You know, the fact that in the storage, they managed to let the plant go down whilst having a solace. When it, it looks like they were very, very caught off by the plant going down and the timing that FaZe chose to push. And I think that was literally just the difference because I think Dark Zero put in a great performance. I think FaZe also put in a great performance. It was two good teams yep. on the map. And it came down to, you know, a couple of misjudgments in one round. And that was literally the difference. And I think you said it best when we were talking about, like, if Troy had been below or been yeah. closer, just to even feed that information with that Solus, that, that sets everyone else up for success because we saw three people up top yeah. without that information being used. And then 